Hello everyone, Alicia here, and welcome to another limited palette video. These two tubes of paint have been sitting on my desk for a really long time now. I don't know why. I don't know why I got them out. I don't know when I got them out. I don't know like what made me, if I got any other tubes of paint out and put those ones away, I, I'm not sure. But this Alizarin Crimson Lake by Sennelier and Lamp Black by Daniel Smith have just been sitting on my desk and I keep looking over and seeing them there and thinking that it would be a fun experiment to do a limited palette with them. So today's the day, we're finally doing it. I really like these two colors. It's interesting how different they are in that the Alizarin Crimson Lake is very transparent and Lamp Black is a very dense, opaque color. So I was really interested to see how they would mix and how they would be different. And of course the brands themselves are just different. So I was looking forward to this fun experiment. I'm always very fond of the idea of a black in a palette acting as a blue, and we see a little bit of that happening in this palette as mixing the red with the black gives us some really interesting purple shades, and the colors are so rich. There's not a ton of tonal variety because these aren't like complementary colors or anything so we're not mixing like a whole new range of like neutral colors or something like that so the range itself is pretty limited and because the other color is black it's almost monochromatic one of the biggest differences between this limited palette video and the others in the series is that I'm actually going to be sharing three small paintings with you instead of one larger painting I wanted to have multiple opportunities to explore what this pair of colors can do. And these are also going to be the mini originals that I'll be sending out to my patrons for the month of, what month, is, for June. That's what month it is. That's so that's now. I really enjoyed having smaller, quicker experiments to test these colors out on as I was able to take a couple different approaches and to see how that changed the final result. So for this first painting, I started with mostly the red color and just working those in in light transparent washes and then slowly adding more and more black to my mixes as I worked in darker colors. It's kind of the most standard approach I think that I could take with this duo of colors, just allowing that red to be the lightest values that were not just left white, and then slowly adding in more black as areas got darker, with some variation where there's some areas of higher saturation that are more red, and some that lean more purple or black. And this was a really good first experiment.
for the second painting, I wanted to have a different approach. Even if it felt to be something not intuitive, I wanted to give it a try because I think it's a good idea to really push the boundaries of different approaches, even if you think that something won't necessarily work. So for this one, I kind of took the opposite approach in that I wanted to start with more of a gray wash as most of this face was going to be in shadow. So I wanted to start with more of the lamp black and then work in some red and purple tones on top of that light gray base. This definitely initially like I had to fight against my instincts going in with like a basically like a light black, you know, this gray wash in the beginning. But it was actually a really fun experiment to build different tones on top of the gray. And I think it's really interesting how different the first and second little pieces are from each other. And I'm glad I tried this little experiment because if I hadn't, there are some little moments that happened in this painting that I wouldn't have gotten to experience. And it definitely made me think about different ways of overlapping colors that may not feel, you know, right in the beginning, but they produce unique results that you wouldn't see otherwise. I definitely found the most limiting factor of this palette to be the fact that the black is just black. So it's not really providing too much in the way of like a variety of tones. Like if this was a blue, then I would have tones that would lean more red to something that leans completely blue and it just would have been a different sort of variety and we still have that here but ultimately it can kind of feel like I'm just it's just a range from like red to purple it's hard to explain because you know there are there is still some variation there but I definitely felt the limitations of the black as I'm at the point now where I've done lots of different limited palettes that are just two colors this one felt especially limiting which isn't necessarily a bad thing I just think it's a point worth noting For this third piece, I wanted to play around with leaving the hair as negative space, which is one of my favorite things to do when I'm working in hair into these like loose portraits. I really like creating the shape of hair by just omitting the sections where those strands of hair would be. And as far as my approach to using the two colors, it was kind of a combination of both approaches. I was taking some of the interesting textures and tonal shifts that I noticed in the second piece and applying those to starting with that red again and then working in a bit more purple as I went, but I wasn't as cautious this time around as I was with the first painting. I was jumping back and forth between more purpley mixes and back towards more red, and I think that having the first piece going from red to black the second piece kind of starting with a gray wash and building on top of that and seeing those differences, seeing those variations allowed me to approach this third and final piece with less trepidation and I was able to more confidently mix the colors and allow them to overlap and I think it was actually pretty effective to look at the way that things shifted over time and ultimately I do think that this third piece is my favorite, even though they're just brief little moments. I think that this third one best captures the path from the first piece to the third. I would love to hear from you. Let me know which of these three is your favorite. If you try this combination of two colors out yourself, 
that's alizarin crimson lake and lamp black if you try this color combo or something similar please do tag me on instagram that's usually where i am taggable and we'll see things i'd love to see what you create what you come up with and i'd love to share some of your creations with this color combination if you have any other limited palette ideas that you'd like to see me try i'm looking forward to dipping back into this series um, please do let me know i will also leave a link in the card and in the description to the full playlist of limited palette videos if you'd like to check the rest of them out this one was a lot of fun and i feel like it's this like distilled down version of exactly what limited palettes are. It's kind of straight to the point in that way. a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon and my members here on YouTube. You're welcome to check out either of those platforms if you would like to support this channel further and get early access to my videos as well as digital downloads and monthly real-time videos or prints and stickers. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you all next time. Bye bye!